I'm here with Brett and Holly, uh, pediatricians at the Montreal Children's Hospital, but now household names in Canada for the Amazing Race Canada. Know you don't know about that, Brett? Yeah, in my house, everybody knows my name. Yeah. And, and in your house, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, Mom, exactly. you got my name? Yeah. <laughs> now that you're on TV, she yeah. knows it. That's yeah, true. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, why don't we start off with uh, with Brett? Uh, it was a, it was a great show. Uh, did you did you enjoy the the uh, new kind of recognition you were getting? The recognition factor of being on a national television show it must have been pretty wild. You'd be surprised. It's been a little bit under the radar, and uh, you know, at the hospital we work. You know, in a, I work in the emergency room, so it's a pretty public place. I'm not tucked away in an office somewhere, but only about once a week or so when I say I get recognized, if that. That being said, every time I can sign a kid's arm on his cast and he's happy and it makes his experience a little better, sure, I appreciate it. I like that. Yeah. Now, you know, as a married couple, you know, we've seen it on the American show, to go on a show like this, yeah. it's tough, and you obviously got a very good marriage because <laughs> you guys really went through a tough time, and yeah. uh, did, uh, uh, you, were, you were like The Rock, right? You were like The Rock and Holly. Holly was great, too, but she had, she had some tough times, and you stood by each other. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I think, you know, we, we worked together well, and then there were moments where it was really tough for me emotionally, and Brett easily could have escalated things, got me even more worked up, but he was calm, he was strong through the whole thing, and, uh, yeah, no, it was an amazing experience to be able to do it with him, for sure. What was going through yeah, just, your mind? Just to say, in fairness, yeah. Holly having meltdowns, is, it makes good TV, so it appears frequently in the show, but when we went out, we were, the, we were tied. We were tied for the highest consent, like, cumulatively ranked team. You don't get to stay seven legs, seven legs of the of the race by just being like a meltdown city, like a team internal in combustion. Uh, I, I was really, really proud of Holly, and I thought that actually, again, the meltdowns make TV, but pushing past those meltdowns and always kind of getting past the wall is kind of how you stick around in that game. And I think that's probably the thing that, about her that was probably maybe the most unfairly portrayed on television. It makes better TV to see the meltdowns, you know? I don't know that necessarily it was, you know, as as rounded out, you know, I don't think that you don't see the other perspective, but she really made me proud, and she, you know, just was <laughs> so perseverant, she was really, really tenacious, you saw at the end, even when we went out, um, you know, she threw the, the harpoon for 90 minutes, you can't appreciate that on television, all the other teams were gone, you know, never quit, so I was, I was really proud of her the whole time. How physically exhausting was this Holly for you, the, the, the lentil thing? People don't, yeah. don't know. They see on TV yeah. with the editing. It but seems I mean, 10 minutes, but that whole leg was around 36 hours. We actually slept on the, slept on the floor of the... Uh, <laughs> there were alarms going off all night. They yeah. were testing their fire alarms was in the Edmonton, Edmonton Airport Edmonton. all night. Yeah. So, so we, we didn't sleep, and yeah. we're going on zero sleep going into the lentils. We were there almost four hours digging in that pit in like 30 degree weather. We were there first, so we were there the longest. We were yeah. there first and we left nearly last. We were there yeah. close to four hours. And then that was before there was a whole other, he did the RCMP, then we had the whole football thing, so it was a mm -hmm. grueling, grueling leg. So endurance is a big, big part of, of the race, definitely. So there were days, some legs are shorter, but that day was epic. It was the, was really, it was the really longest, tough. it was the longest leg of the race. Yeah. Um, that and then the premiere episode. So those those legs were filmed over 36 hours. Most are usually filmed over about an 18 hour, 12 to 18 hour period. Yeah, 12 hours. So it's a so. very very yeah. long yeah. leg, and you know you're just you're hungry, you're sleep deprived, and, and yeah, because basically you're not eating during the day. You're don't the only time we really stop for food is if we're at the airport or if there's time between things. But otherwise you're just going, going, going on adrenaline the whole day. You don't stop to go to the bathroom. And, you're just and, like racing and continuously. That day in Regina was unseasonably warm. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, it was close to it was about 38 degrees that day, and then in the lentil pit it's even more so. So it was just yeah. you know, and on the football and. Yeah, and then, we beat, and then we beat Hal Johnson in sports. <laughs> and then that happened. That made you feel good. It, I'm, I'm not yeah. going to lie. It did. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things is that people uh, people are not aware of it. It's kind of like Holly was saying to me uh, earlier. It's kind of like being in prison. Tell us about what it's yeah. like when they put you in a hotel and you're really cut off from the world during this period. So you don't race every day. You actually have one day on and one day off, roughly. During, and the, during the pit stops. Yeah, so yeah. when you get to a pit stop, you have about roughly 24 hours off that you stay at a hotel but the thing is you have there's no television there's no radio there's no phone All the you have, have no books stripped. you have nothing no magazines it's really just you alone in the hotel room they you have take a guard turn, they take turns alternating whether you're allowed to read the magazine or, or a play pack with of the deck cards. of cards they bought one pack of cards oh. Oh and gosh. we had to share them we had an hour with Among each the other teams. deck of, wow. the deck yeah. of cards so you can't talk to other teams no it's, it's like prison 
It's yeah. exactly like prison. And you sign up for one hour of activity a day, like you go to the gym or the pool for an hour you with walk. your guard. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty great. It's the extremes. It's like you race for a day where it's all adrenaline, all like go, go, go all day to like zero stimulation where you just sit around and yeah. they bring you food all day long and there's no stimulation. So. You're not allowed to speak to the other teams. Yeah. There's no social interaction allowed. I mean, that's the idea. They're trying to sort of capture um, all of the interaction yeah. so that it's organic, so that everything, every moment we have together... And continuity too, so that you're yeah. not having conversations off camera that then won't make sense when you're actually on camera. And... Yeah. Um, my last question is um, a two-parter. Are you yeah. happy you did it still? And uh, you, you, I'm sure you're also happy that you've been given uh, Montreal Children's Hospital, giving them, put their name on the map uh, across the country, because it's a great hospital. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we're happy. We do we're happy. Again. We do it again in a second. Sure. We're waiting for All Stars. We'll be back at that time. But um, no, we definitely do I like it again. That we'll be back at that time. That's <laughs> we'll be. That's, uh, I like that optimism. But yeah. uh, no, we we love the experience. It was great. There were hard moments for sure, but overall, like, it was once in a we'll lifetime. We'll be back if Jet and Dave pass on that opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, once in a lifetime for sure. And yeah, yeah to be able to raise over twenty one thousand dollars for the hospital is. Unbelievable. That was, Unbelievable. Yeah. that was, to be honest, like, to put into perspective what we're doing. You know, like, you, you go on an opportunity like this, it's, a, it's, a, it's incredible. But, like, what are we doing? We're running around playing games. We're running around playing games. That's what we're doing. And how lucky are we that, number one, we have the opportunity to do it. And, you know, not winning is the hardest part about it, frankly, was we'd always said we wanted to commit 25% of our winnings to give back to the Children's yeah. Hospital. Probably that was the hardest part about, about actually losing. You know, we had gone pretty far. We got to see a lot of Canada, more than we more than we ever had yeah. previously. Yeah. You know, we had never been outside of our home provinces. So we had such an incredible opportunity for ourselves that probably the part about not being able to donate back to the children's was, was one of the harder parts about it. You know, felt a bit like we let, let people, people down know. a little. Yeah. Yeah. And so to be able to come back and start AmazingCause.com and have people follow our blog and follow yeah. us on the website and then to be able to raise money to give back yeah. to the children's, that... No, that, to, to, that for a, people to, be, to give the donations that they did and, you know, small, big amounts, everything all together, yeah. the generosity of the Montreal and Toronto community. It was overwhelming. It was, it was really, you know, yeah, how, support, how supportive people were yep. um, and generous was, you know, just overwhelming. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. It's a pleasure.